Friday Worship, 127.23, 2 p.m., 11 in Connecticut. Good afternoon once again, everybody. Nick here. I hope you are enjoying this beautiful Friday after a messy couple of days this week. Disclaimer. This week's message, you will see what I'm talking about broken down into six items. We're going to continue the conversation we were having on Saturday on when it becomes a game. So welcome to today's service. It will begin in a moment. And welcome back to Lebanon. The prelude today is Coming Home by William J. Kirkpatrick and the music by Joseph Martin. Kind of falls into the theme of what this service is about today. And as long as you see me in the lower right hand corner, it means it's fair use.
All right, thank you, choir. That was very beautiful. Welcome to worship here this afternoon. And here are your announcements for today. <clears throat> the next train trip is March 4th to New York City. That would be with Mom. It's a mixed bag of SLE and Amtrak. Now, this trip will start at the crack of dawn. Why? Because we are taking the Gitsella at 930 from New Haven. So we will be taking the first SLE on Saturday, not at a more logical or more reasonable time, just because we just want to make sure that we are there and we don't miss the Excella. The Testimony of Life Cantata, which is this, it will be presented throughout Lent beginning March 15th. Now, you're probably wondering how did I come up with March 15th? Because I looked at when Palm Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter is. It's actually early this year. So it looks like it's in the second week of April. It is. So we're going to do that from mid March onward and actually probably present the whole thing at a later time, as that seems to be kind of the case where I present Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday and Easter to you uh, when they're supposed to have it, and then later in the year as kind of a review, depending on what situations have come up personally. There will be a new video coming out called My Life with Grays in Boston, which is coming soon. It basically will be my perspective on living with Beaker and living with Wilbur, and also my other boss and Rudy from the past. Excuse me. Mm. And also, it'll be a preview leading up to when we get a new Boston, which is on the way. That is a goal this semester. Just like last spring semester was to get a new car, this time it's a new Boston after paying off. Mom and Dad, and we want to say thank you to Rama for helping us out yesterday. A very costly affair to get my car back up and running. Anything else you want to talk about today? No? So we come before him today in this time of epiphany and it's a time where we just lead up into Lent and we look ahead to what the other months of 2023 have in store for us as believe it or not we are at the end of January already so it happens very quickly doesn't it so receive the call to worship people of God who do you come to worship? We come to worship the one true God. How will you worship? Not with words alone, but by living lives of justice and love. Come, you who belong to God. Come, you who are foolish in the eyes of the world. Come and abide in God's tent and in God's heart now and forever. And will you please rise and say with me our opening hymn, number 219. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels wave. I see glory. On each face, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power. 
forever and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Let's pray. Lord, this afternoon we come before you on a very beautiful Friday afternoon. We know that your presence is in this house. As you are with us every week, these services come to life. So far too often we desire to, to look wise in the eyes of the world. We have not spoken truth with our hearts. We have said and done hurtful things to our friends. We have forgotten our identity, wandered into the ways that are not yours. Forgive us and help us live and to become in the people you created and called us to be. As we come to join and sing with you, and may we be fools for Christ, embracing our identity even in the face of the words of the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Come, Christians, join us in. I paraphrase that. Come, Christians, join to sing, Alleluia, Amen. Loud praise to Christ our King, Alleluia, Amen. Let all with heart and voice before his throne rejoice. Praise is his gracious voice. Alleluia. Amen. Come lift your hearts on high. Alleluia. Amen. I shall lift my hands in heaven. Alleluia. Amen. Is our God and friend to us? He'll condescend. His love shall never end. Alleluia. Amen. Praise yet our Christ again. Alleluia. Amen. Life shall not end the spray. Alleluia. Amen. On heaven's blissful shore, his goodness will adore. Sing him forevermore. Alleluia. Amen. All right, very good. That's that's always a fun one. Please be seated. And our anthem here is Unexpected Places.
All right, so we come to the place of prayer this afternoon, and it's another one of his gifts where we can bring our lives and the lives of those around us. We want to say a couple of welcomes to two new people that we came in contact with this past week. We want to sit, have a welcome to Michael J., who lives in Middletown, who we'll be visiting with tomorrow. So welcome him aboard, and we look forward to spending time with him. Also, somebody out in Taunton, Massachusetts, made contact with us, and that his name is Nathan Baker, who lives in Taunton, Massachusetts. So welcome to him, and of course, I know he is watching this service as we speak. So there is still a lot that we can think about and pray about. Certainly in this time of change and getting back into the routine of things, that leads us into having anxiety. You know, I'm wondering how are we going to get everything done? As a college student, we learned how to make everything happen. As that will be what else is talked about in the message today. And as always, I will give you opportunity to lift up those that you know. And the first song today is 2108, Oh How He Loves You and Me. First person, right? Lord, today we come before you from many different types of places. It could be from home, our jobs, or an unexpected place. We know in this world that we live in, sometimes you are left behind. You are forgotten. We get so wrapped up in just day-to-day -day living. That we sometimes forget the most important things in life, our families, our friends, significant others, pets. There is a lot that we can think about here today. And certainly, there is a lot going on in the world. We know that when we start something new, whether it's a new job, new relationship, or visiting with somebody new, it is like opening a new chapter or a new adventure. We thank you for those two people that I mentioned at the top. We pray and hope that they give us what we want and give us what we need. We hope that this semester goes better than last semester, one that was off to a horrible start, but somehow evened out. We continue to think of the people in Parkland and the people in Monterey Bay once again came face to face with something that has become too too often in this country, the need to kill 
and the need to have no regard for human life. We would pray that a new Boston comes. But as mentioned, in order to get there, have to go through a few intermediate steps in order to get what we want. But through this goodness, sadness is never far behind. As mentioned, we think of the shooting in California, the teacher in Virginia just simply trying to do her job, and then a Citro comes in and ruins it for her. Why, we ask, why? We know that there is a lot of hate in the world, and the old love one another has turned into hate one another. The old adage, see something, say nothing. In every relationship, we know it becomes a game when they go into hiding. As that will be talked about in the message. And for the viewers at home, we pause and give you the chance to lift up those that you know. And so it's to this end. You loved us till the end, and you still love us even now. We are your children, even when some people act like fools. You always forgive us. As it is in that prayer that you taught us saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as earth that it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It is operatory time, meaning that it's a time where you guys can subscribe and like, share this, share this video, and so on. And our operatory today is a new one called I Think of You by Laura Story. And as mentioned, as long as you see me in the lower right-hand corner, it means it's fair use. And will the ushers please come forward as we receive the afternoon's gifts and offerings. So I Think of You.
All right. So the reading today comes from Psalm 15 and then 1 Corinthians 19 to 31. So the Dutchology and Gloria Patri was not working. We'll see if we can get it working at the end. But in the meantime, Psalm 15. A David song. God, who gets invited to dinner at your place? How do we get on your guest list? Watch straight, act right, tell the truth. Don't hurt your friend. Don't blame your neighbor. Despise the despicable. Keep your word even when it costs you. Make an honest living. Never take a breath. You'll never get blacklisted if you live like this. And now the first Corinthians nineteen to thirty one, which illustrates that same idea. So first Corinthians chapter one, nineteen to thirty one. The message that points to Christ and the cross seems like sheer silliness to those held out on destruction. But for those on the way of salvation, it makes perfect sense. This is the way God works, and most powerfully, as it turns out. It, it's written, I'll turn conventional wisdom on its head. I'll expose so-called experts as shams. So where can you find someone truly wise, truly educated, intelligent in this day and age? Hasn't God exposed it all as pretentious nonsense? Since the world in all its fancy wisdom never had a clue when it came to knowing God, God in his wisdom took delight in using what the world considers stupid, preaching of all things, to bring those who trust him into the way of salvation. Well, Jews clear for the miraculous demonstration and Greeks go in for philosophical wisdom, we go right on proclaiming Christ, the crucified. Jews treat this like an anti-miracle and Greeks pass it off as absurd. But to us, who are personally called by God himself, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is God's ultimate miracle and wisdom, all wrapped in one. Human wisdom is so cheap, so impotent, and that's to the seemingly absurdity of God. Human strength can't begin to compete with God's weakness. Take a good look, friends, at who you were when you got called into this life. I don't see many of the brightest and best among you. Not many influential, not many from high society families. Isn't it obvious that God deliberately chose men and women that the culture overlooks and exploits and abuses cho cho chose these nobodies to expose the hollow pretensions, the somebodies? That makes it quite clear that none of you can get by with blowing your own horn before God. Everything that we have right thinking and right living, a clean slate. And a fresh start comes from God by way of Jesus Christ. That's why we have the saying, if you're going to blow a horn, blow a trumpet for God. Here ends the reading. And may God have a blessing to the reading of these holy words. So, we were talking about on Saturday when it becomes a game in relationships. And this actually, these readings actually correlate with that idea. Because a lot of times, people could call us nobodies and that we could get called into somebody's. Or somebody may judge you based on your appearance and based on what you have and what you don't have. But according to Medium, there are six signs that it becomes a game in relationship. And we'll look at each one of those now. So sit signs, it becomes a game in relationships. The first is erratic communication. Serial game players keep you guessing. They'll say they'll call text at a certain time, but they don't. They'll leave you in limbo until you are forced to contact them to find out what's going on, which can make you feel a little or a lot desperate. Then they'll contact you constantly and lovingly, so you think it's all on, then they'll go off grid for a few days at a time. This is exhausting and confusing, and it may hint at the inconsistency you're in for if you end up staying together. So this could be classified as somebody that 
you wanted to spend time with. Maybe you wanted to go, I'll use the Dave and Buster example again. If you wanted to go to Dave and Buster's with them, maybe on a Friday afternoon, you both get out of work and, you know, you want to have some fun, but then they don't contact you. They don't respond to you. Uh, they said they'll call at 4.30, but they don't call until 6.30. And they'll go off grid for a few days at a time, as this as this was the case this past week in with the individual from Springfield. It's exhausting and confusing, and it may hit the inconsistency you're in for if you end up staying together. So that is a lot of inconsistency, and certainly people are going to make you feel like. You're a nobody when you really want to be a somebody. Number two, flirting with others in front of you. When someone does this, it tends to be a habitual behavior as well as a strategy used to test your response. The aim is to validate themselves and prove they could have their choice of other partners if they wanted. They'll often get away with this early in a relationship because we're afraid of looking paranoid or jealous or being accused of overreacting. But having your partner openly flirted to a point that makes you uncomfortable is both disrespectful and highlights their core insecurity. Tread carefully. So this is something that, I, that we thought was happening with Charlie early on. Um, basically, the first time I went to work with him, when we had to stop at somebody's house or when we were in New York and I thought he was looking at, he was checking other people out or when we went to Grand Central the first time. All of this leads, is us overreacting or us feeling insecure about ourselves and making us feel uncomfortable. And that is why it is so important to make sure that you know what they are doing and and making sure they are telling the truth and you don't get blamed for their problems. It happens all the time. I guarantee you, probably it's happening right now. So that they validate and prove that they can have their choice of other people they wanted but they'll often get away with this because we don't want to look paranoid or jealous or being accused of overreacting by them basically saying, hey, you made yourself look like an idiot or looking like a fool. Full download of personal problems. People will often square this off as, I'm just being honest, or... If it's going to work, you need to know the true me. But really? Dating is supposed to be fun, not therapy. Beware of someone who downloads way too much too early. This is a particular trap for kind, compassionate people who are always up for offering support. So make sure in the early stages of the relationship the playing field is level. You should be given equal airtime unless, of course, they're paying you. So I think that's really where... That's kind of the predicament that I've gotten myself into when trying to meet other people. It leads to wanting to talk about the things that happened in the past. And obviously, people don't want to hear what has happened in the past. Or if they do, they just want just short, sweet, detailed, and then just move on to the next topic. But... This also could fall into this next piece, or they blame you for something you didn't do wrong. That leads us into that story that happened last Wednesday at IHOP in West Springfield. You know, you think you do something right. I mean, don't we all want to feel accepted? Don't we all want to feel that there's somebody out there that gives a damn about us? This is what was talked about 
we get blamed for things that we didn't do. In their imaginative world, they see us as the enemy. They don't see us as who we are as individuals. You see this so many times that it almost becomes something that is going to happen all the time. Being blamed for things that we didn't do wrong. I think that could be classified into really out of really out of nowhere getting accused of cheating with a supposed female, which obviously we did not do. So that's really what this is. It was it was a full download of his personal problems. And being honest, or if it's going to work, you need to know the true me. You need, it needs to be equal, as I've talked about all along. Number four, they won't commit to dates or catch-ups. Game players won't lock in dates too early. They like to keep all the doors open. This will make you feel like they're hoping for a better offer, which truthfully they probably are. So this could mean, for example, when I went to Damon Buster's and obviously nothing happened. I think he was looking for a better offer or looking for um, a way to get something that he obviously wasn't going to get. And I cannot tell you how many times that this happens, too. It happens a lot. And certainly, you guys need to make sure that you know who these people are and make sure you get a clear understanding of what their intentions are before you become their next victim. Keeps distance between you and their friends or family. Game players avoid having you meet the key people in their lives. There's always an excuse. It's common to keep introductions until you're sure-ish of a new partner. People with agenda will drive this out for far longer than is reasonable. There can be several reasons. They have a past they don't want you to know about. They don't want you to learn the truth about them. They lack close friends or they won't allow you to get too close so it's easy for them to walk away. This is pretty self-explanatory. I'm not really sure I need to explain this one to you. But basically what this is, is you want to get to know them. You want to know their families. You want to... And as I've said a lot, too, there's no reason. If these people drive, why not? They could come here. But, but, no. It's all a game to them. Sense. You can't shake your anxiety. This is the biggest sign of all. It's normal to feel a little anxiety at the start of a new relationship, especially if you've been hurt by someone or previous relationships just haven't worked out. But gradually, things should settle, and you should feel comfortable with your partner. A big league game player, though, specializes in keeping your stomach churning with anxiety because that's the game, and that's the way they want you to feel. You're never sure of them, their thoughts, emotions, behavior, and commitment. You never know what you're going to get when they push through the door. Slowly, you'll, you lose your confidence, your mental health suffers, and you lose your sense of self. That's what happened. That's exactly what happened with Charlie, and certainly that is something that we do not want to happen again. If it comes to that, opt out and don't look back. Remember, these games only work if two people are playing. So it could be a one-way street with this. So basically, what? Those things that I've just read to you are the classic signs of when it becomes a game in relationships. You don't have to fall for anybody. You don't have to give in to their nonsense. If you feel in your gut that you know that something isn't right, then don't go. 
Maybe you, maybe you tell them, no, I don't feel comfortable with that. Or offer a compromise to them. Say, hey, I'll go if you do this or if you do that. It's about being on the same page and being equal with each other. Because isn't that what we all want? Don't we all want the same things? Don't we want to feel accepted, loved, and felt like somebody gives a damn about us? That we're not nobodies, we're somebodies? As it says in Psalm 15, how do we get on your guest? Let's watch straight, act, act right, tell the truth. Don't blame your, don't hurt your friend. Don't blame your neighbor. Despise the despicable. Keep your word even when it costs you. Make an honest living. Yes, be honest with each other. Don't lie or don't LOL everything somebody is saying to you. If it's a serious conversation, that LOL should not even be in your thought process. That should not be there. There is a time and place for that. And, and as I've said before, that is used way too often in tense. Then that naturally makes us think that we said something wrong or they're not taking us seriously at all. And as it says here in verse in Corinthians 1, 20, in verse 26 says, take a good look, friends, at who you were and when you got called into this life. So as we've seen on Dr. Phil and probably a lot of other shows, people get used to living in a certain lifestyle that they can't change. We think of the Beverly Hills Brett. We think of People that want to look perfect, people that want to put their parents in debt by giving them everything that they want. It's sad when you think about it. Just yesterday, I had to ask for help. I had to ask I, I, I had to ask Grail for help to get something done that needed that needed to get done. It doesn't mean doesn't mean you gotta ask help ask for help all the time. Oil oil changes, uh, a wheel bearing change. We we can just simply save up for those things. Split it our paychecks in thirds. So that way a third of it goes away and we still have two thirds of it to play with. Mind you, we don't really go out much. So there so. It's an easy way of being like, okay, if I have to get a wheel, I have to get a wheel bearing re replaced. How much is this going to cost me? And figure, okay, if it's fifty bucks to get the piece of equipment that I need, how much? How much is it going to be to be put in? And what is attached? What is the total going to be? All of those things are reasonable if we save up. Now, a lot of times it becomes a game when people want in your wallet as well. You guys know if you've used Grider and all the other ones out there, you may have been posed the question, are you Jen? Now what now what does that mean? That means are you generous? That means that they want in your wallet. They'll say, oh, to pay my rent, or no. No. 
having the self-respect and to say no. Everybody's there for the same thing. Why it's it It's a balancing act, guys, of what to believe and what not to believe. Are we going to believe everything we hear? No. Are we going to believe everything that we see? No. Just think about this, guys. Before you go out and make yourself look bad, when you make poor decisions and make poor choices, this is really what this is the predicament you get yourself into. Remember, you want to you want to become a somebody, not a nobody. You want to be able to under, to understand the fact that yes, they are telling the truth, that they will not screw you, or you will not be their next victim. A, being too trusted early on in the relationship. You can't be too trusted early in a relationship. This is the other thing I've learned. You cannot be too trusted in any relationship that you're in. You can't because they find a way to come back at you. Is it always going to be this way? No. No. It won't be over time. It'll get better, as he's saying, but as I just read to you, if people want it to be better, and if people want you around, they will work it out with you. Give and take in relationship. Now, what does that mean, give and take? It means, basically, they do something for you, you do something for them. Especially true if you're in kind of a tight financial situation like I am, where you're basically living on a budget. You know, maybe one day they buy, then the next time you buy. Or... You, they come over for dinner and you spend nothing. But this is the beauty of this, guys. This is understanding the fact that we have to tell the truth. We have to be open, honest, and not hurt our friends by saying something to them that is rude. And just very unpleasant. This is when it becomes a game. If you guys want a new relationship, you have to really take a good look at yourself and just think, okay, what is this person going to be like? What, do, what is our ideal person? Who do we like? Who do we not like? You know, how are they going to treat us? It's a balancing act, guys. It really is. And I think you guys will learn when I do the My Life with Grays in Boston. You'll learn that sometimes your pets are your best relationship that you have. Because sometimes people... They just suck. A lot of people do. I'm not saying everybody does, but there are some people out there that just are in it for themselves. They take advantage of us, and we don't want to be taken advantage of, do we? We have to learn to say no. And next week, we will continue on in second first Corinthians chapter two. And that's today's message. Amen. Our closing hymn is actually a preview 
for Lent, lead me to Calvary. Pain of my life, I crown you now. Yours will the glory be. Lest I forget your thorny crown, lead me to Calvary. Show me the tomb where you were laid, tenderly mourned and wept. Angels in robes of light arrayed, guarded you while you slept. Lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget your agony. Lest I forget your love for me, lead me to Calvary. Let me, like Mary, through the gloom, come with a gift for you. Show to me now the empty tomb, all that you said was true. Lest I forget this ceremony, lest I forget your agony, lest I forget your love for me, lead me to Calvary. May I be willing, Lord, to bear daily my cross for you. Even your cup of grief to share, give me a heart renewed. Lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget your agony. Lest I forget your love for me, lead me to Calvary.